A pond is a quiet body of water that is too small for wave action and too shallow for major temperature differences from top to bottom. Inside is a freshwater ecosystem. Due to their light penetration, ponds are capable of supporting a diverse range of water plants and animals. But it's not what they can support that has us so interested. It's these strange findings. All right, so this morning we are in Petoskey and uh, we found out that there's an underwater crucifix. From mutant human tick hybrids to ancient relics that have been buried for thousands of years and more. 20 strangest things recently discovered in ponds. <laughs> Baby tick hybrid. What scientists just discovered in a pond shocked the whole world. A giant hybrid tick. It's worse than we feared just looking at it. It's summertime, which means more sunshine and more time outdoors playing, hiking, and exploring nature. Unfortunately, this can also mean more quality time with some of nature's most nefarious pests. Ticks are not insects, it's true. Ticks are not insects, although they are often mistaken for them. Ticks are actually classified as arachnids, or relatives of spiders, scorpions, and mites. If you look closely at a tick when identifying it, it kind of resembles a spider with its four pairs of legs and lack of antennae. Ticks are mini, real-life vampires that want to suck your blood, too. They require blood for sustenance. They primarily feed on the blood of deer, but they will also bite mice, small wild animals, birds, and humans. Now, mix that with a human body, it might look something like this. This nightmare-inducing creature is expertly crafted from silicone, giving it an incredibly lifelike and unsettling appearance. It's made by Lara Majanuko and is available for sale. How much does it cost? Around $3,500. This art piece is carved entirely by hand in acetic silicone paste and it's meant to elicit the kind of response you'd expect. Shock. Lost Bell Tower. Since Roman times, the towns high in the Alps near the Italian-Swiss border have been occupied. But in 1939, the local power company drew up plans for a dam that would give the area plenty of seasonal electricity, but create an artificial lake that would unify two natural lakes and submerge the towns in the valley between them. Despite fierce resistance on the part of the villagers, the plan was eventually passed and the ancient town submerged in 1950. When they created the lake, it was a catastrophic event for the local population. Today, all that's visible above the waterline is the bell tower, a 14th century church called St. Katharina, reminding us that the local population lost everything. Below the waters of Lake Resia, the remains of 163 buildings remain accessible only to divers. Visitors can now contemplate the bell tower from a beautiful trail that meanders around the lakeside and into the surrounding mountains. In winter, the stunning aquamarine water freezes over, and tourists can walk out on the ice to see the tower up close. In any season, wind conditions are good for kite surfing, ice sailing, and ice surfing. But locals weren't again sticking around the lake after dark. Rumor has it that even though they were removed years ago, on some nights, you can still hear the church bells ringing. Lake Michigan Stonehenge So, is this the North American version of the UK's Stonehenge? It sure looks that way. Underwater archaeology and prehistoric remains collide to form a Midwestern mystery as much as 10,000 years old. But that's not all. They found a boulder with a prehistoric carving on it, too. The so-called Stonehenge is a formation of large blocks located in the water off the shore of Lake Michigan in the northeastern United States. The formation is composed of five large limestone blocks, each weighing several tons, that have been arranged in a rough circle. The blocks are spaced about six feet apart, and the entire formation is about 30 feet in diameter, at a depth of about 40 feet into the lake's Grand Traverse Bay. Using sonar techniques to look inside for shipwrecks, archaeologists discovered sunken boats and cars, even a Civil War era pier. But among all that, they found this prehistoric surprise a series of stones arranged like no other. It's thought to be the remains of a prehistoric Native American ceremonial site. The site was originally discovered in the late 19th century by workers who were dredging the lake bottom for sand and gravel, but forgot about it. The formation was initially thought to be a natural formation, but a recent investigation revealed that it was man-made. Of course, it is currently listed as a National Historic Landmark. Bronze Age Coffins 
An incredibly rare wooden coffin dating back to the Bronze Age was found with the remains of a man inside at a golf course in Tetney, England. The incredible find was made during work to a pond on the course after a spell of hot weather. The log coffin and its contents, the remains of a man who had been buried with an axe, are thought to date back to around 4,000 years to the Bronze Age. The axe that was found is thought to be extremely rare, with only 12 known from Britain. And it is even more astonishing that the wooden haft has survived over the years along with the stone head. The coffin was made from hollowing out a tree trunk with plants used to cushion the body. When it was buried, a gravel mound was raised over the grave, a practice that could only be afforded to people with high status within societies during the Bronze Age. Archaeologists are suggesting the axe is more a symbol of authority than a practical tool, and the coffin suggests the person buried was of high social standing. The men buried at Tetney lived in a very different world to ours, but like ours, it was a changing environment. Rising sea levels and coastal flooding ultimately covered this grave and burial mound in a deep layer of silt that aided in its preservation. Giant Catfish Nowadays, the Chernobyl Zone is a natural technogenic reserve, so people can observe how nature behaves without the active intervention of the human. As a result, the flora and fauna of the region live according to their laws and rules, because there is no participation in the economic activities of the population. Lucky them. These giant catfish live nearby the Chernobyl station. The cooling pond was used to stabilize the temperature of Chernobyl nuclear power plant reactors before they exploded in 1986. More than 35 years have passed since then, and the power plant is no more, but the cooling pond has a new purpose. It's these catfish's home. Some station employees say jokingly that Chernobyl catfish are almost the size of torpedoes. They weigh up to 150 pounds. That's almost the size of an adult male. You would not believe it, but radiation is not the source of their growth. Chernobyl catfish have got plenty of food, so they do not have to search for it. There are no catches in industrial scales. The amount of natural predators has significantly decreased. As a result, fish of Chernobyl breed and grow very quickly. For obvious reasons, catfish are not fish there, which is why they grow here to colossal proportions. Plus, they're being fed by tourists daily. Statue of Jesus This 11-foot, 1,800-pound Italian marble statue of a crucified Christ is in about 20 feet of water at the bottom of Little Traverse Bay in Lake Michigan. Today, divers frequently view the hidden marvel in the summer months, but the winter event allows non-divers the chance to peer through the clear water and catch a glimpse of the crucifix, which serves as a memorial to those who've lost their lives on the water. So, how did it get here? Apparently, it was originally ordered for a 15-year-old boy that died in a farming accident. So his grieving family decided to purchase the crucifix from Italy for $2,500 as a way to memorialize him. But it was damaged badly after the trip across the ocean, so the parents refused it. It went up for an insurance sale and a local dive group purchased it for $50, but spent about $900 fixing it up before putting it in Lake Michigan as a tribute to the lives lost on the lake. The sculpture is located about 1,200 feet from the shore at the bottom of the Little Traverse Bay. Hundreds of people travel to this small northern Michigan town every season for the chance of catching a glimpse of this rare sight. But it isn't as regular an occurrence as some would like. Severe weather can prevent anyone from seeing the religious symbol made of marble. But when the weather is good, it's a sight to behold. Westwater Gnome Garden the Wasdale Valley, home to England's deepest lake, is a glacially over-deepened valley surrounded by some of the highest mountains in the country. Wastwater Lake, in the western part of the Lake District National Park, is the deepest body of water in England at 258 feet, and it's the last place you would expect to find a garden tea party of gnomes. Originating from Germany in the 19th century, the Garden Dwarf was produced for the purpose of ornamentation and protection from evil sorcery, believe it or not. Extremely far removed from the safety of neat lawns and squeaky clean gardens, here they are. It's an unexpected twist of fate for those little decorations when you consider the wild surroundings. Or is it just a bit of fun? This is a question for authorities. Police say divers should not put themselves at unnecessary risk looking for gnomes in the wastwater. But it is not lost on the diving community. Wastwater is a very popular diving location, and the existence of these gnomes is well known. 
The garden gnomes are a bit of fun providing divers with something to look at rather than just mud. It is said that this lake is clearer at 165 feet than closer to the surface, and so it's the ideal site for these deep water lake dives. In fact, many dive sites around the world are now boasting garden gnomes underwater. Goldfish in Oak Grove Lake In a rare catch, a British fisherman was left stunned after he laid his hands on one of the world's biggest goldfish, according to reports. We'll take their word for it, because this thing is huge. The gigantic orange specimen, aptly nicknamed the carrot, weighs a whopping 67 pounds and 40 ounces. It is 30 pounds heavier than what was considered to be the world's biggest goldfish caught in Minnesota, USA in 2019. Notably, the fisherman caught the fish while fishing at Blue Water Lakes in Champagne, France, one of the world's premier carp fisheries. The outlet further said in its report, the fish is a hybrid species of leather carp and koi carp, which are traditionally orange. Apparently, he always knew that carrot was in there, but he never thought he would actually catch it. It took the fishermen 25 minutes. If they are kept in home aquariums, goldfish tend to grow no larger than 2 inches long. But when released into the wild, these teensy fish can grow into giants. Despite their propensity to die in captivity, goldfish are as tough as they come in the wild. Having proven capable of living 25 years and surviving up to 5 months without any oxygen. This is because the fish evolved to live in ponds that freeze over in the winter. Upon announcing the day's catch, the fisherman was told, you're gonna need a bigger fishbowl. Arizona Lake Park officials in Arizona have deemed that this underwater Jason Voorhees statue should be removed from the bottom of Lake Pleasant. They say it's nothing more than litter and needs to go. We couldn't disagree more. Divers placed him underwater in the cover of night because they feared that park officials wouldn't be fans of the classic horror movie villain from the Friday the 13th franchise. The statue isn't the only thing welcoming divers to Lake Pleasant. There's also a card table and chairs set up with skeletons playing poker, complete with waterproof cards. Christmas trees and even a car are also present at the bottom of the lake. The statue, among other props, was placed by divers as underwater markers. And it looks awesome! Nobody had any idea it was even there until a video of the Jason statue started making its way around the net. And once divers caught wind of the statue, they were coming from all over the world to check it out. Some folks were not excited, however, including the Lake Pleasant's regional park supervisor. Since then, plans have been made for an underwater cleanup to remove the statue. Contrary to more recent reports that have claimed the statue has already been removed, Jason is still down there, and locals have now spearheaded a petition to ensure he remains in his watery grave. Old Man of the Lake It is not a legend or a myth, as it may sound at first, but a 450-year-old hemlock tree that's been floating vertically in Oregon's Crater Lake since 1896. The very thought of something so old floating in the lake for well over a century does sound crazy. The tree trunk, which is 30 feet tall, stands 4 feet above the water. Tiny flowerless plants called fontanelles in the water of the lake decorate the hemlock and give it a charming look to an old man. And that's how it got its name. The exposed end of the driftwood is splintered and wide enough to support a person's weight, while its surface has been bleached by the elements. Crater Lake is a water-filled volcanic basin formed nearly 8,000 years ago during the eruption and subsequent collapse of Mount Mazama. It's the deepest lake in the United States at just over 2,000 feet. To the indigenous people in this region, the crystal blue waters of Crater Lake are sacred. According to local legend, an epic battle occurred one night thousands of years ago. Standing atop Mount Mazama, one of the gods spit magma and steam miles into the sky, blowing Mount Mazama to bits. The victory was honored by filling the massive hole remaining with water, creating this iconic lake. But the old man of the lake gets all the attention these days. Gunboat USS Philadelphia is a gunboat of the Continental Navy. She was constructed in 1776 for service during the American Revolutionary War. She was part of a fleet that fought against the British Royal Navy in the Battle of Valcour Island on Lake Champlain. Philadelphia was sunk during the battle, when it was reported in the summer of 1935 that the wreck of the vessel had been discovered at the bottom of Lake Champlain. Back then, a veteran of World War I and a history buff began searching the strait for remains of the battle. He found the Philadelphia's remains in 1935, sitting upright on the lake bottom. 
He raised her that year. In addition to the guns and hull, hundreds of other items were recovered from the vessel. These relics included cooking utensils, tools, buttons, buckles, and even human bones. The boat was exhibited at various locations on Lake Champlain and the Hudson River until the boat rescuing veteran who uncovered this boat approached the Smithsonian Institution to preserve Philadelphia in 1961. By then, however, the remains had suffered more damage during their time above water than below. The boat and artifacts are now part of the permanent collection of the National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C., listed on the National Register of Historic Places and is designated a National Historic Landmark. Lake Huron Sinkhole In 2001, mysterious sinkholes were discovered in northern Lake Huron. They've attracted researchers from around the world to find out how much water comes through the sinkholes. What role do they play in determining how the lake levels rise and fall? And since then, scientists have been studying Lake Huron sinkholes for years, particularly their function as an outlet for water that travels underground and into the sinkhole. Incredibly, the journey from land to the sinkhole is about a mile. In other newly discovered sinkholes, the water travels 15 miles. The sinkholes are considered to have a small effect in boosting lake levels, but researchers are still trying to verify how much of an effect. They describe the nearshore flow as the equivalent of a stream and the offshore sink flow as more of a seep. The water flowing into the sinkhole nourishes microbial life along the bottom that is rarely seen and not so easily accessed in other parts of the world, making scientists giddy with possibilities. A research team is proposing the increasing day length on the early Earth may have boosted the amount of oxygen released by phytosynthetic microbial life, thereby shaping the timing of Earth's oxygenation. The rise of oxygen levels early in Earth's history paved the way for life as we know it. Roman Ships Lake Nemi The Nemi ships were two ships, one larger than the other, built under the reign of the Roman Emperor Caligula in the 1st century AD on Lake Nemi in Italy. Since ancient times, legends circulated about two gigantic and magnificent ships built in Roman times, which perhaps contained treasures and other fortunes which lay on the bottom of Lake Nemi. Since the first century AD and then throughout the Middle Ages, the legend circulated and was refreshed by the occasional discovery of strange finds by fishermen. The legend, however, had a grain of truth. They did actually sink to the bottom of the lake and nearly 2,000 years later were recovered in an archaeological mission conducted from 1928 to 1932. The recovery provided one of the most important contributions to the knowledge of the Roman naval techniques. Although the purpose of the ships is only speculated upon, the larger ship was an elaborate floating palace, which contained quantities of marble, mosaic floors, heating and plumbing. Both ships featured technology thought to have been developed historically much later. The ships were elaborate floating palaces. Unfortunately, however, although they were recovered from the lake bed in 1929, the ships were destroyed by fire in 1944 during World War II. Fish with human face Tourists in southwestern China got a bit of a fright when they thought they spotted a human face floating through a lake. Turns out the spooky sight was actually a fish with some unique markings. The fish, which had been identified as a carp, has its own normal fish eyes and mouth but the dark markings on the fish's head make it look like it has a second set of more human-like features. This eerie optical illusion was caught on camera by one onlooker who spotted the fish. The footage has now gone viral, unnerving animal lovers all over the world. Carp have been cultivated in aquaculture in China for over a thousand years. Grass, silver, big head, and black carp are known as the four domesticated fish in China and are the most important freshwater fish species for food and traditional Chinese medicine. Big head and silver carp are the most important fish worldwide in terms of total aquaculture production. This extraordinary animal was discovered by a visitor in the Miao village, a tourist destination in the city of Kunming. And not long after, Netsians have been amazed by the 15 second clip since it emerged. Carp have long been known to carry markings that can look like a human face but actually seeing one is rare. Sightings of human-faced carp have been reported in Taiwan and the UK. Monet's Pond Officially called Namanaki Pond, meaning nameless pond. This striking pond in Japan is more commonly known as Monet's Pond for its resemblance to Claude Monet's famous water lily series of paintings. 
And believe it or not, the pond is only slightly larger than a tennis court and has been a social media sensation ever since it first splashed onto the scene in the summer of 2015. The most interesting part of Namanaki Pond is that it isn't intentionally created to attract tourists. The original purpose of the pond, which remains to be one of its main functions to this day, was an irrigation reservoir. In the 1990s, the pond was overgrown with weeds until the owner of the neighboring park decided to clean it up. After some serious weeding, with the help of the local neighborhood council, water lilies were planted. The fish were introduced later, provided by locals that weren't able to care for them anymore. One of the other reasons that the pond gathers so much attention is because of its clear, pristine water. The secret behind the water lies in the composition of Mount Koga, the source of the pond's spring water. Beautiful year-round, the pond is especially striking when the water lilies bloom from late May to late October, with mid-June to mid-July being the prime viewing period. Mysterious Blob Canadians have begun finding strange jelly-like blob creatures in Vancouver's iconic Stanley Park, and nobody is quite sure why. The brain-shaped beings are called Briozoans, and they're actually made up of hundreds of tiny separate creatures clustered together. Zoids, tiny hermaphroditic organisms less than a millimeter in size, clump up in bundles to form alarming larger blobs. Briozoans form vital parts of the ecosystems around the world and are represented by 5,000 different species of organisms. This lake called the Lost Lagoon has experienced falling water levels. Summer was so hot and dry that the pond's level dropped, undoing the blob's best attempts to camouflage themselves in the murky depths. Climate change could be the culprit. Experts theorized that, since these unusual animals can spread only in waters warmer than 60 degrees, climate change might be forcing them north. But they may have been there in the past and escaped detection in the once deeper waters thanks to their muddy coloring. They might look like props from a low-budget horror film, but these mysterious slimy brain-like blobs are in fact colonies of hundreds of tiny creatures. They've been around for hundreds of millions of years, long before the first dinosaurs walked the earth. Rare Jellyfish Freshwater jellyfish from China's rivers, lakes, and ponds have recently been found in the USA. These jellyfish were first discovered in the Great Lakes in 1993, when observations were reported in Michigan and Ohio. Over the past 90 years, the invasive species has spread to eight states and established in dozens of water bodies around the basin. Unlike their saltwater favoring cousins, this species is likely a freshwater jellyfish that's native to the Yangtze River in China. They're sometimes called peach blossom fish, translucent and barely an inch in diameter. The jellyfish has so far been well-behaved, according to a collaboration of academics and field biologists. But people should nonetheless keep a lookout for the creature, just in case it has been disrupting native food chains. Swimmers can relax, though. Its stingers, which can kill small aquatic bugs and fish, aren't equipped to penetrate human skin. The organisms do share similarities with their invasive species that now call the Great Lakes home. And if the water temperature gets too cold, they can change their form to protect from the freezing conditions. There are also very few natural predators that feed on jellyfish in Michigan, which is why even in lakes with large fish populations, they can thrive. 3,000-year-old ruin. Deep in Turkey's biggest body of water, Lake Van, a secret fortress that lay dormant for thousands of years was discovered recently by a team of university archaeologists following local rumors of submerged structures. What remains is a mixture of fallen stone piles and persistent structural surfaces dating back to around 3,000 years, to a time when the lake surface would have been hundreds of feet lower. But what's the real story behind this Atlantis-like discovery? Parts of the castle, a term that discoverers used to describe it, likely date to the Middle Ages, which lasted from about AD 476 to 1450. However, it's not clear when the castle was washed underwater. For instance, some of these reports indicated that medieval castle builders at Lake Van actually reused ancient material dating back to about 1000 BC to create the castle walls. The team had found a lion drawing on one of them, supporting the idea that a people who flourished in Turkey about 3,000 years ago may have built the structure. It's possible that some of the 3,000-year-old remains seen here were actually reused by castle builders during the Middle Ages. A vast collection of surveys and documents published by archaeologists who surveyed the area in the 1950s and 1960s 
includes mentions of both Uratu and medieval remains in the area. Religion Artifact Lake Titicaca, straddling the border between Peru and Bolivia in the Andes Mountains, is one of South America's largest lakes and the world's highest navigable body of water. It's said to be the birthplace of the Incas, however, an ancient group of people made ritual offerings near the Island of the Sun in this lake, about 500 years earlier than the Incas. According to new discoveries, the team's research shows that the Tiwanku people, who developed in Lake Titicaca between 500 and 1100 AD, were the first people. The Incas did not arrive in the region until around the 15th century AD. A team conducted underwater archaeological excavations and used sonar and underwater three-dimensional photogrammetry to scan and map the reef. They used a water dredge to excavate the sediments and measured and weighed all the archaeological materials they uncovered. In particular, the team found ritual offerings consisting of ceramic feline incense burners, sacrifice juvenile llamas, and gold, shell, and stone ornaments. While we can't know for sure exactly what these long-ago acts of offering signified to the Tiwanku people, who practiced and observed the ceremony, the fact that such elaborate rites were performed at all tells us more about the state and sophistication of the Tiwanku state. Colonial Church Emerges A 400-year-old church submerged in a reservoir in a southern Mexican state emerged due to a drought in the region that has reduced water levels by 82 feet. It is the second time a drop in the reservoir has revealed the church since it was flooded when the dam was completed in 1966. In 2002, the water was so low visitors could walk inside the church. The first time this occurred, local residents decided to hold mass in the old town. The church was built by a group of monks who arrived in the region inhabited by the people in the mid-16th century. The church is 183 feet long and 42 feet wide, with walls rising 30 feet. The bell tower reaches 48 feet above the ground. The church was built due to its position along an important highway built and used by Spanish conquistadors. It was a church built thinking that this could be a great population center, but it never achieved that. The church was abandoned due to the big plagues of the 1700s. Construction of the dam occurred in the 1960s and flooded not only the riverbed, but also hecked acres of rainforest and farmland various towns and villages, and archaeological sites. Known as the Temple of Santiago, most of the building's walls have collapsed, but the wall with the bell gable remains. However, the reappearance of the church still brings visitors to the area. So before you take your next trip to your local watering hole or take a dive in the pond near your place, think of these videos. They prove that there is much more to them than we ever imagined.